Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are discussing about stool parasites. This is the part 1 of the video and part 2 will be published shortly. It contains helminths in detail. Here we are going to discuss about protozoa. First we have to understand concentration techniques. It separates parasites from fecal debris and increases the chances of detecting parasitic organism when these are in the small numbers. They are divided into flotation technique and sedimentation technique. Flotation techniques use solutions which have higher specific gravity than the organism to be floated so that organism rise to the top and debris sink to the bottom. Sedimentation technique used solution of lower specific gravity than the parasitic organism thus concentrating the latter in the sediment. They are easier to perform and it is the formalin ethyl acetate technique. Let's learn one by one. First is flotation technique. Take 4 gram of stool in 10 ml of 10% formalin. Mix it and let it stand for 30 minutes. Strain it through a wet gauze piece and add 0.85% NaCl. Centrifuge it for 10 minutes, decant and repeat. Now decant and add zinc sulfate to fill the tube. Centrifuge for 1 minute. After centrifugation, two layer will separate. Without moving the tube from centrifuge, take 2 to 3 drops from the surface film and put it on the slide and observe wet mount and iodine preparation under microscope. Now let's learn the sedimentation technique. Take 4 gram of stool in conical tube and add 10 ml of saline. Mix it well and let it stand. The next step is strain it through a wet gauze piece. Then centrifuge it for 10 minutes and decant. After decant, add 10 ml saline and centrifuge again and rip it and decant and after add 10 ml of 10% formalin, mix well and let it stand for 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, add 2 ml ethyl acetate, centrifuge for 10 minutes. After centrifugation, four layer should be developed. Decant top three layer and observe wet mount and iodine preparation from sediment. The uppermost layer is ethyl acetate, then the layer of debris, then the layer of formalin and in last, the layer of sediment formation occurs. In this video, we are looking at a protozoal part of stool parasite. The sub kingdom called protozoa has four main subgroups. They are sarcodina, mastigophora, ciliophora, and sporozoa. Most common organism respectively are ant amoeba, giardia, balantidium, and cryptosporidium. Let's see one by one. Amoeba. The sub kingdom is protozoa, sarcodina. Genus is ant amoeba. E. histolytica and E. dispar are pathogenic organism and all others are endolimax nana, iodamoeba, bushelli and others are non-pathogenic organisms. The symptom of non-pathogenic organisms are mostly asymptomatic. But E. histolytica and E. dispar causes a symptoms and they are dysentery, amoebic liver abscess, other complications like peritonitis, perforation and formation of amoebic granuloma.
The cyst of amoeba is typically found in foam stool and tropozoids are typically found in diarrheal stool. The route of infection is ingestion of mature cyst from contaminated food, water and hands. Let us see the life cycle of amoeba. When mature cyst are ingested by a host, it reaches to small intestine. And in the intestine, the excitation occur. After excitation, trophozoid formation occurs and trophozoid multiply. Trophozoid multiply and form into more trophozoids and cysts. And this cyst exist a host and again contaminate the environment. And this contaminated food water is ingested by another host and thus cycle is completed. The diagnosis of amoeba is mainly based on a stool examination which is wet mount preparation, iodine preparation or concentration technique. Three consecutive stool sample improve the chance of detection. Trophozoids of E. histolytica are elongated in shape 15 to 20 micron in size and have centrally placed karyosome in the nucleus and all other amoeba have eccentrically placed karyosome in trophozoids. So this is the distinguishing feature between E. histolytica and others. Another feature which is erythrophagocytosis which is ingestion of red blood cells by parasite is classically associated with E. histolytica. The cyst is larger than E. Hartmanni cyst and morphologically similar to one another. But cysts have four nuclei that is characteristically have centrally located karyosomes. The cyst measures 12 to 15 micron in size. E. coli cyst contain 8 nuclei in the cyst. Other modes of diagnosis are antibody detection kits, antigen detection kit and molecular methods like conventional PCR and real-time PCR. Next organism is Giardia. Sub kingdom is Protozoa mastigophora flagellate. Genus is Giardia. Symptoms of Giardia infections are severe diarrhea, malabsorption, abdominal pain, bloating, nausea and vomiting. The cysts are the resistant forms and they are responsible for transmission of Giardiasis. Both cysts and trophozoites can be found in the feces which is called diagnostic stages. The root of infection is ingestion of cyst in contaminated water food or by fecal oral route. Here also cysts are observed in form stool and trophozoites are observed in diarrheal stool. Let us see the life cycle of Giardia. When the cyst is ingested by host, it reaches to intestine. In the intestine, again, excitation occur and trophozoid formation occurs. The trophozoid multiply and form more trophozoids and cysts and they both are excreted in the feces. And this again contaminates the environment and again reaches to another host and thus cycle is completed. Diagnosis of Giardia which is mainly done by the stool examination. The Giardia trophozoid are pear shaped and it measures 10 to 20 micron in size. Two large nuclei are usually visible in a stain preparation like trichrome stain. Giardia motility is falling leaf motility which is observed in wet preparation and E. hominis have a jerky motility which is also observed in wet preparation. The cysts of Giardia are oval to ellipsoid in shape and measures around 8 to 19 micron. The mature cysts have 4 nuclei while immature cysts have 2. Nuclei and fibrils are visible in both iodine stain wet mounts and 
trichrome stain smears. Other modes of detection are direct immunofluorescence assay. Here, antibody tagged with fluorescent markers are added to stool and incubated. Visualization under a fluorescent microscope shows a giardia cyst as a green glowing ovoid subject. The next is Balantidium coli. The sub kingdom is Protozoa ciliophora ciliate. The genus is Balantidium. The symptoms of infections are mostly asymptomatic but diarrhea, dysentery, malabsorption, abdominal pain, bloating sometimes observed. The symptoms are severe in immunocompromised host. The route of infection is similar like ingestion of cyst in contaminated water and food. Let's see the life cycle of Balantidium coli. The life cycle of Balantidium coli is similar to that of Giardia and Antamoeba. Diagnosis mainly done by stool examination. Both Balantidium coli, trophozoids and cysts may shed in the stools and both stages may occur in diarrhea stools and usually only cysts are observed in the form stools. The trophozoids are characterized by large size, presence of cilia on the surface, a cytostome and a bead shaped macronucleus which is often visible. The cysts are seen less frequently and range in size from 50 micron to 70 micron. B. coli trophozoid can also invade the tissue. Now let's learn the Cryptosporidium. Sub kingdom is Protozoa sporozoa coccidia. Genus is Cryptosporidium. The intestinal coccidian parasites are intracellular protozoa most frequently transmitted during the foodborne and waterborne infections. Cryptosporidium parvum and Cryptosporidium hominis are the leading cause of human cryptosporidiosis. The symptoms of infections are following. Immunocompetent patients may present with diarrheal illness that is self-limiting and typically resolving within 2 to 3 weeks. Immunocompromised patient may have more severe complications such as life-threatening malabsorptions and wasting. The route of infection is similar like ingestion of fecally contaminated water or food or following direct contact with infected animal or people. Let's see the life cycle of Cryptosporidium. When the thick wall oocyst is ingested by host, it reaches to intestine. In the intestine, the asexual cycle and sexual cycle completes and thick walled oocyst is exist the host through feces and this oocyst contaminates water and food. And this contaminated water food reaches to another host and thus the life cycle is completed. Let's see the diagnosis. Diagnosis mainly done on stool examination. Cryptosporidum species oocysts are rounded and measures around 4 to 5 micron in diameter. Sporozoids are sometimes visible inside the oocyst. Oocyst can be stained with trichrome, modified acid fast fluorescent stain, oramine and rhodamine. Other modality of diagnosis are acid fast staining method, immunofluorescence microscopy, enzyme immunoassays, molecular methods like PCR. Let's see the blastocystis hominis. The sub kingdom is stramenopyle. The organisms such as diatome, chrysophytes, water molds, Slime, nets are other examples of stramenopiles. Genus is Blastocystis. Most commonly found parasites in the stool. The predominant form found in human stool specimen is referred as vacuolar form and is of variable size 5 to 40 micron and occasionally much larger. Blastocystis species have been detected in both symptomatic and asymptomatic persons. Let's see the life cycle of Blastocystis hominis. The cyst form and vacuolar form is ingested by a host which reaches to intestine and 
again cyst and vacuolar form are shared in the feces and which contaminates the environment the contaminated environment reaches to another host and thus the cycle is completed so this is in short about protozoal parasite in the human stool examination the video about helminths in detail is in upcoming video stay tuned bye